Hello? Hey MG, listen. My machine learning data set is big enough that I need to run my data wrangling step in a distributed processing manner over a Spark cluster. I rewatched okay. our video on attaching Synapse Spark to Azure ML to run my codes over the Synapse Spark, but I cannot find the Azure Synapse resource you created. Did you again remove my access to Synapse? Oh man, I'm gonna pay for my needed Spark pool, okay? Give me access to your Azure Synapse again so I can get a Spark pool. I cannot really understand your behavior, come on. I will pay for it, just give me access. Hey, listen. So you need to use Apache Spark in Azure Machine Learning for your data wrangling, am I right? Yes, I need Apache Spark in Azure Machine Learning, okay? Okay, so as of now, you no longer need to first create your Synapse, create a Spark pool, and then attach it to Azure ML. Because there's a new capability announced in Azure ML that is called Manage or Automated Apache Spark in Azure ML. So you can directly within Azure ML create a Manage Apache Spark cluster by Azure ML for your interactive workload, and you can ignore the Synapse part. Why you didn't tell me this sooner? This is much easier because Azure ML will automatically create the Spark cluster and manage it by itself, right? I know, that's a new feature. So you can still attach your Apache Spark cluster from Synapse or use this managed cluster Spark by Azure ML. I can show you how to do it. Yes, please. Okay, then let's go. Hello everyone, how you doing? This is MG and I'm hoping you're doing great. If you remember previously, we recorded a video about how you can leverage Spark capabilities or Apache Spark capabilities in Azure Machine Learning. So if you recall in that video, we created an Azure Synapse service in Azure and then we created a Spark pool in Synapse and then we attached that Spark pool to Azure ML so we can sort of leverage Apache Spark capabilities for distributed processing for our data wrangling in Azure ML. But as of now, I'm going to introduce you a new capability in Azure ML called Managed or Automated Apache Spark in Azure ML. That means you can now just ignore the Synapse part and directly within Azure ML, you can request a Managed Spark cluster that will get launched for you so you can interactively code over Spark within Azure Machine Learning and the notebook that you're doing your sort of data wrangling as a step for your data science workload. I previously got to know this feature and I give it a try. I found this is pretty impactful. So just wanted to create this video for you and get you introduced to this great capability. Let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank All you. right, so here's my Azure Machine Learning Workspace and before deep diving to automated or manage a Spark, Apache Spark in Azure ML, which is the topic of this session, if you remember previously, I recorded a video that how you can leverage sort of a Spark in Azure ML. And before introducing this new capability in Azure ML, which I'm going to do in this video, the way that I described in the other video, which I will add the video to the top right of the screen here. So we had to previously go to the link service and attach an Azure Synapse, which is another service that you have to create on Azure to then attach this Synapse to your sort of Azure ML through link service. And the reason is in Azure Synapse, which is sort of a data warehousing plus analytics service, you can have a Spark pool or a Spark engine created here. So when you have your Spark cluster in Synapse, you can bring or sort of attach that Spark cluster of Synapse to Azure ML through this integration and then offload your Spark sessions and code execution to this Apache Spark cluster coming from Synapse. So we had to go through add integration, give it a name, let's say test one, two, three. And then I have to tell that, okay, where is my Synapse I'm gonna connect to, right? Which has my Spark pool. I have to say, this is my subscription and here's my Synapse I created before. And then if I click on next, it will show me that, oh, you have an a Spark pool created with this amount of nodes and this amount of CPU, uh, the RAM. So are you going to attach this Spark from Synapse to Azure ML to use it for a Spark session? Then I'm going to click on next, review, done. But now there is a new feature, a new capability in Azure ML 
as of the time that I'm recording this video, video this feature is in preview mode. So later on when you want to come back and watch the video, maybe this new capability is generally available. So with this new capability, you know, you don't need to create a Synapse, Apache Spark cluster there, there and then attach it all the way to Azure ML to be used. So as of now, no need to do so. You can just directly come to Azure ML and request a Spark session and cluster and it will be automatically created for you and managed end to end by Azure. So you don't need to install a Spark session here. You don't need to configure a Spark session here. You don't need to create Synapse and connect to see Azure Synapse Spark pool. Everything you need to do is just come in here and do the Spark session created in Azure ML. This is the easiest way to leverage a Spark in Azure ML that I'm going to talk about. Okay, let's do it. So let's go back to the home and let's say now I'm going to create a notebook that I want to start code in Spark or the Python API of Spark, which is PySpark. Specifically, if you don't know what is Apache Spark, long story short, that's a sort of a great way in memory processing to calculate and transform big data. If you have considerable amount of data and just uh, vanilla Python is not enough for you and you need to do distributed processing over, over a cluster, over multiple nodes of a machine to do distributed processing to save your time for big data transformation, Spark is the way to go and one of the, the greatest way actually to go. And now let's say you're considering uh, dealing with wrangling of considerable amount of data and you want to have a Spark in Azure ML similar to Databricks, here's the key. So let's do that. I'm gonna go to notebooks. I already created one and I executed a Spark, so I'm gonna show you how I did. So the first thing is just creating a notebook, right? You know how to do so. Just click on add files, create a new file, and then here, give it, a give it a name to your notebook. Let's say test so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're gonna say this is a notebook and you just click on create, that's it. I already created and I named it Spark as an example. That's why it says, oh, it already exists. That's here I created before. So I'm gonna cancel it. So I came to this notebook and this notebook was empty, right? Now, as you remember previously, without this new capability, what we had was sort of, uh, okay, let me change my notebook. What we had was sort of a compute that we previously need to create in compute instance section here with the amount of core and RAM that I wanted and I can execute my Python code sort of here. But as you can see, this is a new type of compute which is called Azure Machine Learning Spark Cluster, Spark Compute that has been added. So the question is, how did I add this so I can attach this notebook to a Spark? Well, because that's a preview feature and recently added to Azure ML, you have to enable it. So first you need to go sort of uh, go to manage preview features to this icon. And here are usually the list of preview features that has been recently added to Azure ML, which one of them is Spark. Let me check, where was it? There you go, run notebooks and jobs on manage Spark, right? So you can perform sort of the same function functionality when you use Synapse Spark Pool attached to Azure ML. So similar to the same experience we had, but this time it is managed and created here, so no longer need to deal with Synapse. So it was disabled like this one, so I clicked on it and it became enabled and turned to blue. When you see this, you're good to go. Just close and potentially refresh and come back again to Azure ML in case you don't see this new type getting added. So going back to my Spark Network, and I saw that perfect, it is added, so I clicked on it, it says Azure ML Spark Compute Type is ready. But that doesn't mean like you can just go and run your notebook all done. First, you have to configure this uh, sort of uh, Spark cluster, right? So how you can configure this Spark compute, which then you will be able to execute notebook is going through configure session. So where is configure session? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think you can see this downside because of the size of the screen that I'm recording, but exactly the place that I'm showing my uh, pointer here, just slightly down on the downside of your notebook, you will see a blue text written as configure session. Just click on it. And this is what you will see. This is the place you can specify your configuration for Apache Spark. Here is I am specifying 3.2 as my Apache Spark version. The instance type, they have all different sizes and RAMs. And then I can, let's say, 
go with the default one there is a timeout let's say after 30 seconds this box session gonna be uh this is this box session timeout it's gonna be terminated after 30 seconds now here is asking me do you want to have sort of auto scale for your dynamically scaling and growing your apache spark cluster from one compute to three computes to distribute the the, the processing right so one to three is what i've chosen execute the size these are like your worker nodes how big they want to have them let's say here is the only choice that i have is small for cpus 28 gigabyte of ram and the driver size here i cannot change this is fixed but this is sort of a driver size that can be different compared to the executor uh, size if you want to install some pip install python packages over this cluster automatically you can just upload a conda file which for this case i don't have it and last but not least if you want to add something like a property value or a tag you can specify it here and after doing all your changes you click on apply here is grayed out because i already did and that's it you'll see that in the configure session that i clicked here on the right side it is telling me that your spark session is getting ready and then you will see the ready sign on the downside here then you will be able to execute your PySpark code and you will see that the language PySpark Python is added here. So now what I'm going to do, which I did in this code, I want to just simply access to the data that I have in a blob storage, right, or ADLS Gen 2. There are multiple ways actually you can access to a data that is residing on a blob storage, right? The first way that if you have the, the key of that access blob storage, you have to specify the key. You can write down the, the key actually value in the code, but it's not a best practice. That's credential. So you can store your credentials or key in a key vault and then retrieve that to your code to be able to access to that blob and read your data through this Spark session. The other way is through SAS token. You know that each storage you can create a SAS token. It is like a password to get access to a specific file or a container inside your blob storage so you can access the data. The other way which I am doing is using the, the identity of the user. Here me, MG. If I have access to that blob storage as my identity, I should be able to execute this code. That's why you don't see any key, any password I've added. If I don't add anything, it's going to check if MG has access to this blob storage. And by the way, you have to start with ABFSS, then dash dash. This is the name of the container that I have my file, and this is the name of the blob storage that I have my file. Let me show you actually. So, this is my sort of a storage account name that I have specified here. Then here I created a new container just recently called it Spark. And then in the Spark, I uploaded this CSV file, which is the Titanic sample data set. That's it. So after uploading that, I go say, say that go to this blob storage, go to this container, and there is a path to my CSV file that I'm going to upload. Then just simply doing some very naive um, transformations, like replacing missing values, stuff, imputing. Uh, for a specific columns using a spark and then that's it then my spark sort of um, um, a, a spark um, then the spark session gonna execute this notebook or code and it will write it back to CSV so here I'm using uh, PySpark spark pandas and then I save the data back to the same blob to the same container but in another folder called wrangled then I execute it. You can see that my Spark session got started with job 0 to 2. It got executed in 25 seconds. And when I get back to, I see that, oh, there's a new folder created. Then I click on it. You can see in pocket format, oh, sorry, in CSV format, the, 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 the part of the data that, it was, that was sort of crunching batches for Spark, which here is just one, got saved for me through a Spark session. So let's recap what we did. First, we enabled this private preview feature. Uh, sorry, preview feature. Again, if it goes to general available, yeah, that might change. But as of now, the time recording, this is the place you need to create, sort of enable this preview feature. And then you saw that the Azure, Mil Azure Machine Learning Spark added here. And then you have to go to configure session on the downside to sort of configure your Spark cluster. It's going to take just a couple of minutes to execute the first code. And then your Spark code going to get executed through a Spark session. And that's it. Now, what we did, I didn't specify the credentials to access to this blob storage. So it will use the identity of myself, MG. And in order to get access to, I should be a contributor to this storage and also 
a data blob contributor make sure you have these access to this blob storage and then you should be able to execute this code now the question is what are the other ways to access to data now i used my own mg identity we talked about you can use the key uh, value of that blob or storage or you can use the sas token how about data store right what is data store you know that in azure ml you can sort of create data store which is a connectivity to a source and you can register your data set here so if i have already them here why i cannot load this data that i have registered as a data store to the connection and use it in a spark session right the answer is actually yes you can so what I'm going to do, I'll show you a notebook example and I will add the link of that notebook example to the video description that, that provides you code example for all these different scenarios that I talked about. Which is here. There you go. All right. So here you go. You can see that interactive data wrangling using Apache Spark. You can access to the, to the data using the access key that I mentioned you about. You can see that I'm getting the secret. I'm not a specifying secret, which is the key here, and the access key is added. I'm connected to my blob. Or you can use SAS token. I talked about the same example here. Using identity path through, this is actually what I use, right? So that's why I mentioned make sure you're a contributor and also the storage blob contributor to be able to sort of leverage this type of connectivity or using service principle if you don't want to use mgid you want or your self id you want to use service principle then the same thing and okay here's a place that we can connect to azure ml blob data store you know that azure ml comes with the default blob storage that's why it is going to data stores and the default workspace storage and then the path to the data that you have in the data store so that's how i mentioned you that even if you have a data store created in azure ml you can still use it to grab a data through an spark session so i'll add this sort of uh notebook example to the video description make sure you check that out in case any of them is more aligned with your specific requirement and use case you can check it out and again, this is a pretty sort of new feature added in Azure ML, which is called Manage or Automated Apache Spark. And as you saw, I didn't deal with Synapse anymore. I was able to create it directly in Azure ML. And this feature is certainly evolving, so you might see changes coming in. Write down in the comment below what type of questions, that feedbacks you have about this feature, what sort of ideal uh capabilities that you're looking for with this new feature or some potential shortcomings that you're thinking is coming with this feature let me know i'm really keen on knowing your idea about it and of course if you want to further know on specific scenarios write down your suggestions i'll gonna make sure i'll spawn and potentially come up with another video based on what you're looking for thanks for watching this video so far and i hope you enjoyed it the same boiling water that softens the potato will hardens the egg so it's all about what you are made of, not the circumstances. Wishing you wonderful moments, my friends. Take care, and we'll see you shortly in the next video. Bye for now.